Well, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, we're talking about emotional eating um, and trying to make some changes, like for you know those of us who've been eating a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies on on the fly, <laughs> um, and any other uh, dietary changes you're wanting to make. Um, so I asked one of my best friends to come and talk with me. She's one of the smartest people I know. She's a holistic RN. And um, she helps women and women balance their hormones. And um, she's had a lot of success in hacking her um, metabolism. So anyway, thank you so much, Dina, for coming and being my, my wingman. I'll be your goose to your maverick. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And I, I love doing these fun events with you. Um, we always learn so much together and learn from each other and from all of you. And so we're excited that you are here with us. Um, as we know, sugar can be highly, highly addictive. And so we are going to be talking about some strategies that you can put in place. And I am so blessed to be here with my dear friend, Kim. Uh, those of you that don't know Kim, she is a wealth of knowledge I get to travel all over with her and I'm always just so like just amazed at how much she knows about how everything about our environment, our world, our emotions and how we experience things are tied to our own bodies. And, and sometimes, you know, those things get trapped physically and she's so good at releasing them. And so um, just being in her presence is always so fun and I get to learn and, uh, we get to collaborate together to help other people and and share our life's work. So it's it's always fun and always a journey. So thank you so much, Kim. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, um, kind of what spurred this is, um, I I've I had an eating disorder for seven years between the age of eleven and seventeen, and I was in I was in an inpatient rehab twice. Well, once for inpatient and then once for outpatient. Um, and it was, you know, a little crazy. <laughs> it was, it was really difficult and, um, it took many, many years and lots of therapy and, um, being surrounded by smart people to finally unwind and figure out like, uh, the, my self-awareness around food and my relationships with people and where some of those root causes came from. Um, so I'll just give you a couple examples of mine. I'm not going to go into a big story about it, um, but just okay. to give you an idea of if you're kind of wondering where yours might have come from. Um, my grandmother was raised to oh. um, only value her beauty. Well, she was only valued for her beauty. And in how she raised my mother was you're only valued for your beauty. And um, my older sister, I'm the youngest of three. She's kind of like the golden child, like did everything right. Everybody loves her the most and showers her with attention. This is what I watched growing up. And um, my older sister hit puberty and she gained about 30 pounds in a short period of time. And I watched my sister go from being like everybody's like she does everything right to what's wrong with Crystal. And a lot of concern and a lot of gossip and it felt like to me that everybody like stopped loving my sister. So having her appearance change in quote unquote negative way showed me that if that happens to me, then look what this, this golden child, people stopped loving her. Um, so it, it shaped my relationship with my body, um, at a, at a young age and, um, a lot of weird eating stuff, you know, like rules that families have, like eat half now and come back in five minutes and eat the other half. It's not like eating it all at once. <laughs> like these funny little things that we used to drink ourselves. <laughs> so I'm laughing because it's just so silly. You know, I'm, I know that everybody has little stuff like that. Um, did you have something that, like that, Dina? I, you know what, I can't remember if, if I did, but I remember growing up, like we weren't allowed to really eat sugar, but my parents were divorced. And so my dad would use it as a tool to 
get us to do what he wanted us to do. So it was like a manipulative tactic um, mm -hmm. because my mom never let us have it. And he knew that. So he's like, if you're really good and you're quiet, then you'll get to have a candy bar later. Mm. You know, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, no, nothing, nothing nearly as severe as, as what you experienced. Yeah, just interesting. Um, I've noticed that my husband, how he uses chocolate now, because he, he literally keeps bowls of it on my counter. Anyone who's come to my house, they're like, wow, you have a lot of sugar on your counter because I don't have control over that right now because he's the one going to the grocery store. Um, it's because he grew up with nothing like that. He grew up so poor. They didn't buy stuff like that. His mom made everything from scratch, which is amazing. That's why he's so healthy. Um, but so he experiences it as I can provide this for my family. And this is a treat. This is being rich, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's, different different points of view of why people indulge more you know does anyone have anything they want to share about that no okay I do have a client that um I was just talking to last week and um she she's dealing with a weight issue and um She's like, I was taught that I always have to clean my plate. And so when her kids leave something on the plate, she goes to finish it because she was always taught to make sure the plates didn't have any waste on them. And I think a lot of us deal with stuff like that. You know, like it's not, it's not mindful to waste it. Can anybody relate to any of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and then, um, also too she experienced in her family that um you showed love through food mm -hmm. so it was used as a reward system um this is how the family showed love you know so those kinds of things can anybody relate to any of that yeah, yeah. okay so yeah yeah big time so those are some of the things that we're dealing with and those become filters that we see we, we we look through a different lens because of some of our experiences from the past Kim my parent my mom didn't like to cook so mm -hmm. we ate out all the time so our our stuff was either restaurant or fast food most of the time so that wasn't good either so mm -hmm. Yeah. And you experienced some of that too, Kim, you're with your, your family always being on the go with sports and stuff like that. Oh yeah. I, I, I didn't know how to eat at all. Um, my mom was always on yo-yo <laughs> diet. So she was, she ate separately from what she made us. So I never got to see like what she was eating. Cause it was like in the nineties, like cottage cheese and diet chips. <laughs> it, was a, it was a slim fast bar. Slim, yes, definitely <laughs> Slim and Jenny Craig meals. Um, and then the stuff she made us was like so gross. We were hiding it in napkins anyway, and then we'd eat cereal and crap later. Um, but yeah, we we ate on the go because my sister was in soccer, so we just were like eating like truckers, like McDonald's and Burger King and shit like that. So. <laughs> You know, as when I hit that age, when my sister gained all that weight and, you know, now she's like doing everything she can to lose it. Neither one of us had any, um, like we didn't know, like all we knew was from school, like a pyramid crap, you know, like we didn't know what vegetables to eat. And not until I was in those rehabs that they actually like show you, like you need this much protein in a day, you need this much vegetables, you know, to, for sati satiety to have yourself be um, satisfied, you know, but um, it's more than that. I know it's more than that. Like that's why we're really bringing it home with the emotional piece. Um and I don't know if any, any of you have experienced this, but have you gone to go eat something and maybe you weren't present, you were watching TV or you were on the phone and you ate it all and you, and then you're like, where'd it go? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. like, and you don't even feel like you ate it. You're like, I don't even feel like I got my dinner <laughs> because I wasn't present for it. Mm -hmm. um, that was how I used to experience food um, because I would black out while I was eating. 
And that was part of that binge and purge situation. Um, and I, Dina, I've heard you talk about that, that hormone that gets turned on the ghrelin and then the home, which, which is the one for when you're full and when you're not, when you're not full. Yes. So, so we have ghrelin, the ghrelin is our hunger hormone. So that turns on when, when maybe, um, a lot of times we'll experience that. I'm no, if you've exper experienced the hangry feel where you're like hungry and angry at the same time. And like, you, you feel like you're going to eat your own arm off. You're so hungry and you start getting a little bit shaky and grouchy. You're like, I just need to eat, you know, um, that's that ghrelin hormone stimulating. You've, you've, your blood sugar in the brain is dropped enough to where you are like, I need to eat. And then um, the, the leptin is the hormone that says you're satisfied and they should work in conjunction, but just as much as we have insulin sensitivity, we also have leptin sensitivity as well. And so some of our hormones become very elusive and silent. Yeah. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to share my screen. Da, 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 da. My dad always says, you just have to be 10% smarter than whatever you're trying to figure out. The computer in this case. Wait. Uh, mm -hmm. Stop. What is that? Share screen. So you just got to be 10% smarter. <laughs> okay. You guys you can see that? You guys? Are you hungry? So when we go to make a change and you know we're like, okay, like okay. I'm gonna eat okay. more vegetables. Um did Marlo have something to share? Did you did you have something you want to say, Marlo? No, she was talking to her dog. Oh, okay. I didn't know if she wanted to share something. <laughs> Definitely talking to her dog situation. Um, so yeah, when we go to make a change, a, a lot of us kind of like do it with a, you know, two cents. You're like, am I going to be able to do this? You know, there's not a whole lot of like full belief that goes into this because we've failed in the past. And it's kind of like the same thing. Like I've been watching a lot of Love is Blind, by the way. So I might make some references to that. Um, like when you go to start a new relationship, you know, you're, you don't go all in, you know, cause you could get your heart broke. We, we can do the same thing when we go to make a decision about our eating. We don't want to get our heart broken. We don't want to go into the situation where we're not going to trust ourselves again. You know, we want to build trust, which builds our self-esteem. Right. Um, so Dina, do you want to share a little bit about that? Um, yeah. Um, I think a lot of us have triggers that are emotional in nature that are surrounded by food. Um, when we think about, I, I want you to think about like what happens before you even go to eat. Like, are you bored? Are you, can you identify any emotions that you have before you go to eat food or before you eat um, whatever it is that you struggle with putting down, like you feel like it's in control of you versus you in control of it. Um, and think about like those things as we're going through this and, and talking about transitioning to something a little bit more healthy. Um, I know for some people it's like a gummy worm or, you know, maybe it's a handful of chocolate that's not so much, you know, um, cause there is chocolate that's good. Like I I'm not totally against chocolate. I, I think that dark chocolate is full of antioxidants. There's a lot of healing power to it. Um, but when you're eating a whole container of it, that can become an issue, right? <laughs> it's when, it's when the moderation is no longer a thing. And we're like eating the whole sleeve of the, um, you know, the girl scout cookies or, um, I've had a couple of clients that are like, oh my gosh, like I, I just have a little bit of peanut butter. And I'm like, well, how much is a little bit of peanut butter before bed? And they're like, well, it's like a half a container, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, that's not a little bit like one serving is, is one tablespoon, you know? So think about like before, before you're reaching for something, what are some of the emotional triggers that you feel? Can, can anybody, does anybody know what those are for you, for you right now? 
I'll just say boredom. Okay. Yeah. That's I awesome. was going to say that for me as well, boredom, or I will use it um, when I'm like sad or depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, and I've heard some of my clients will say any emotion. So when they go to feel anything, they want to eat because it's a soother. It's such a soother for them. Just yeah. having too much junk food here with my family, with my parents. I mean, it's like when there's cake and cookies and candy cakes and everything sitting on the counter. It's just, yeah. yeah. Mostly for me, it's being underprepared. It's, it's like out of kind of like a, well, I guess what it is, it's panic. It's a bit of panic. Like I won't get enough. Mm. Cause I will catch myself even like while I'm making food, I'm like, well, I'll eat this before. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> That's what I've noticed. Yeah. What happens if there's not enough? Everybody else is hungry. <laughs> your mom, you're making food for everyone. You're not going to starve your kids. So you're going to be the one out, right? If there's not enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're right. There's some, some of that going on there. Let me move to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about this. Let me move this so I can see. And this is very important because, because we have created some sort of pattern around food from our past. This is where in this program that we're doing, we're identifying where that got started and what filter got made in order to keep you safe. Some of us, some of us eat sugar and we like to pack on the pounds to protect our bodies. Weight usually, it, it also keeps us protected in a sense, emotionally protected. And so we want to really look at, you know, what are some of those things that we're trying to protect ourselves from? Is it safe to now process those emotions? For some people, that's a yes. And for some, it's a no. And that's what we'll work on uncovering as well. I like the phrase that you use, you know, is this for my highest and best good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going I, to yeah. Um, the, the quality of the questions that you ask yourself are really what are drivers for you. And so if you're saying, why can't I just get rid of sugar? That presupposes your answer to your brain. And so we're going to also teach you how to ask the right questions. And so one of the questions that I ask myself before I eat anything is, is this for my highest and best good? But when I ask myself that, I can easily say yes or no, <laughs> you know? Because I know, okay, this is probably not, you know, this lump of sugar is probably not the best thing for my highest and best good. But if I go ahead and I eat some salmon and some salad, that is for my highest and best good. So can you guys feel that and see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, and what I know, and I know this from, you know, my addiction recovery that once I've made a good decision a couple of times, my confidence in myself goes up and my, you know, unhealthy shame spiral starts to go away. You know, that where if I keep doing the thing that I don't want to do, I'm reaffirming to myself, you're not worth it. You know, you'll never change. <laughs> yeah. How many of you have been down that road? The shame spiral? Yeah. Yeah. Let me change here. I think we've all taken a journey down that one. <laughs> so what I have found, and while I was pregnant, I was able to take the meta the meta power soft gels. That's the one with the all the different essential oils in it that are for balancing your sugar and for flattening out the fat cells and doing all amazing things to your metabolism, not just for losing weight, but for helping with your cognition and your energy and sleep. Um, but I was able to take it because I didn't need to produce milk. I can't take it now because it's got high levels of peppermint in it. Damn it. And that lowers milk supply. But if you take two in the morning and two at night, holy crap. So helpful for sugar cravings. Like it, it like makes you not even want it. 
Have you, what have you experienced with that? Or has anyone else done it? Yeah. Anyway, you got to try it. Yeah. I, I love the power. Yeah. I just started trying it today. So, you know, it may take a little bit for me to see how it works out, but. Yeah. yeah it took me and Kim probably what a good two months, two to three months, Kim. Before well, we were I, like, whoa, you know. I didn't notice it for like eating stuff in the beginning because I was taking all this meta power, like the collagen for pain relief. So it took me like six weeks where I was like, wow, like all my pain is gone in my neck. That was like the biggest thing. But I noticed within two weeks that it had changed my sleep. But as far as the, I didn't notice what was going on with the soft gels back then. Cause I was, I had louder issues, but mm -hmm when I was pregnant and I was like, I can't be creating a baby out of crap food. <laughs> I need to eat better so that my baby's not made out of Indian food and in and out. Um, and I was using the soft gels and it was like game changer, you know? I wanted to make sure people understood that those two, for people who have tried the the collagen before they had this pomegranate cherry flavor, it, it, I mean, it's okay. It's no big deal. The lemon, lemon, lime flavor, but well, if you just get this one, it's so much better, like 95% better. So I like, I enjoy drinking it, you know? Yeah. I haven't tried this one yet. I have, I have the, the meta power flavored one. I love it. Like I, well, you'll I, see. <laughs> I know I'm like, Oh no, would it be like pomegranate cherry all the way? If you try the pomegranate cherry, you won't go back. <laughs> really? Oh man. Yeah. I have two I have two more boxes to finish of my other. Just let your husband finish. <laughs> well, know. because it's a limited time offer right now, <gasps> I'd order I'd order it just so you have it. Okay. All right. Good I feel like it's a scare tactic. They're they're gonna let you get it. Like they just added it into the the kit, the you know, where you can oh. pick which ones you want. So they're just yeah. saying that. Not okay, true. good. Good, good, good. Let me move on to the next thing. Okay, so cravings and your gut biome. Like, so if you got like imbalance of the bad and the good bugs in there, you know, like one, well, one of the ones that gets a bad rep is candida. You actually need candida. You just don't want it to get out of control, candida. Because it's it starts in your mouth. As soon as you put food in your mouth, your body starts to create the enzymes to break it down. And candida is one of the ones in there, sorry, that starts the, the digestive process. But when candida gets out of control, which it does when you, you know, have been eating bad or, you know, too much sugar because you're feeding the candida, um, then it, it, it can create a lot more cravings, obviously, because your body's asking you more, for more and more and more. And the, Candida actually can create like what they call an exoskeleton around your brain. So like if we were talking about aliens, it's kind of like an alien got in your body and it it, it created an exoskeleton on your brain and it, it's telling you eat more. So if you can balance your gut biome, um, then you're then you can turn off that alien sugar brain thing. And I, and I do want to just say like, there, there is so many studies out there and so much research on gut health. And I mean, I'm in like three different programs for functional medicine and all of them are like, if you can heal your gut, your gut then heals you. So it is so important to help restore your gut. This is what helps you with hormone balance. This is the key to brain health. It's also the key to your immune function, how your how all your systems work together, how things communicate. It's all done through these biofilms of these microbiota. And so it's super, super important that you are taking your PB Restore. Like I have three things that are a no, no tolerance, like must have every day. got to have it. That's the LLV, the MetaPower Advantage and the, the PB Restore. Those are, those are a like 
deal breaker. You've got to have all those, you know. I leave this one out on the counter, like the ones that I leave out, like my amounts of what I need to do so that I don't forget. Cause if I keep it in the cabinet, I'll, I'll like space it out. You know, mm -hmm. I like taking it in the morning. Um, that feels like the best time for me. You know, I used to take them at night, but now like there's, there's conflicting research, but they say like, don't take it before you go to bed because your digestion's slowing and then you don't get the full benefit. So it's better to take it in the morning. Um, and I've noticed a huge difference the first month and a half of when the baby was here, I wasn't taking my probiotics cause I was kind of just like not on it. <laughs> and he was suffering. Like he was doing that, like, you know, witching hour of baby call it crap, you know, where you're like the world's going to end between 10 and 11 PM at night. And then I got on it again and he's fine. So, and that's, Anyway, but what, as far as balancing our cravings, we have to make sure our internal environment is, is working the way that we want it to. Um, so anyway, that's why I really wanted to bring it up and they have the powdered kind too. So like you can just mix it in water or you can eat it like a pixie stick. Are you talking about both, both of them, them or sorry? What did you think? Sorry, uh, go ahead, Matt, and then Donna. Are you referring to both of them that you take in the morning or just one of them in the morning? Or do I only, you like mix it up? I only take the 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 pills. My kids take the powdered version, but they recommend that because they have two different many strains that are different. If you have a chronic gut issue, they recommend that you take both. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes will take the kids one. Um, just because like for a treat. Yeah, I do. I do the PB restore every day and then three or four times a week. I take the, the junior just to have the extra probiotics. And I like to change them up. Like, so if you, if you want, you could do the PB restore and then do the PB assist junior the next month and then go back just so you're getting inoculations of good, different bacteria. If you were doing one or the other. What were you going to say, Donna? Uh, my gut got trashed because of antibiotics. So I've actually been doing both of them. And I know um, some days when I've just got that really hangry sugar craving, if I do the PB Assist Plus, then that takes away that, um, that handles that sugar craving for me so I don't reach for candy and junk stuff. Smart. What is the difference between the two? I'm sorry if I missed that part. The oh, restore well, versus the assist. The they're both have the prebiotic and the prebiotic fiber, and then the probiotic and the postbiotic. Um, but the granulated one, the one that's like a pixie stick, it has different strains. So one has certain strains and the other has certain strains, but both of them are amazing for your skin. Um, for regulating your digestive system and regulating the that candida thing that gets too high and then it makes your want more sugar. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so getting enough protein is really important for feeling satisfied. Um, they've there's a lot of different versions of this, but what I'm hearing more lately is. 30 grams of protein with each meal. What do you think, Dina? Cause she's, she's got her method with this too. I do. And it really depends on how much you exercise. So the more you exercise, the higher it's going to be and the more active you are, cause you're going to be utilizing your muscles more and you need to feed them. And so, um, you know, it's usually somewhere around 70 grams of protein per day, all the way up to 170. It just depends on, like I said, like for men, it's higher. And then for, for women, that's kind of the, the, the range, but if you are more active, it'll be closer to the, the higher end. And then if you're like, you know, I, I sit around, I, my, my 12 ounce curls are, are the water lifting to my mouth. Like then you'd be on the lower end. <laughs> 
I, what I've been really trying to be good with, I'm not like super amazing at getting 30 grams of protein with each meal, but right when I wake up within 30 minutes of waking up, if you can get your 30 grams of protein, which would be like two eggs and a cup of black beans and, you know, a piece of bacon or like in the protein powder, there's, um, what is there? 24 grams of protein, Dina. Do you remember? Yeah. It's, a, it's oh. 20. Yeah. I think it's 24 and like seven carbs, six or seven carbs. Yeah. It's pretty, it's good. And then you yeah. can have like a handful of cashews and you'd be like good to go, you know? Um, but when you do that within 30 minutes of waking up, um, and then getting like light exercise with it, you're, you're kickstarting your metabolism. You know, when I do things like that, like little habit building things, you know, just every day I'm using my MetaPower products, I'm eating, drinking my protein drink. Um, it builds my confidence. I'm not like full blown ready to like, I'm going to do everything perfect. I'm just ready to like, okay, I'm making small changes just so that I don't backslide and sabotage myself in the past. Cause I am a person that's like, I'm going to do everything at once. And it's going to be amazing, you know, and then I crash and burn and, you know, and we know that story. So just habit stack, you know, do little bits at a time. And when you get to where you're feeling more confident, then you'll be able to handle more, you know, um, I like, doing the, I like doing the protein after meals too. So, mm -hmm. so like you, you eat your meal and then you have your protein shake at least two a day. Like if you're trying to lose weight, um, and really work on the carb cravings and, and all this fun stuff that we're talking about. This is really, really beneficial twice a day. Okay. I'll take that advice. Watch you. Like, oh you're going to call me and go like, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this sooner? I've only been drinking it once a day. Yeah. So I'll, I'll up it, but I know you Let's like to mix your greens with it. Don't you? I do. My mom always mixed protein with the greens. And so like, to me, it tastes good. I like it. And I, I mix it with water. I don't even mix it with like, you know, um, almond milk or anything like that. Um, and I do the vegan one. I, I, I haven't had the vegan one in a couple of years, but I just ordered the vanilla and I got the chocolate because Gio just decided he wants to be a bodybuilder, my seven-year-old. So he's like, did you order my protein powder? I'm like, okay, I ordered. So he's been drinking it too, which is good for them. But I, I, so I'm at home all the time. So some people need to mix everything together all at once. Like I know people that mix their collagen and their electrolytes together. And then some people do their greens and their protein together just for time saving. Mm -hmm. But for me, I like to savor it. Like I want to spread it out. So I actually like to have like each one on their own throughout the day. And that helps build my hydration as well. Cause I'm drinking more water, you know, but the greens are really great for building your gut biome. So if you're taking the probiotics, the one we just talked about this one, you need, it already has prebiotics in it. That's like, it's preloaded. If it were the fancy fish that you just bought and you need to feed them, it's already got their own fish food in it, but which no other probiotics have that. Um, are, so I like to do the greens though, because I'm trying to work on helping my body, like be satisfied, um, and get the nutrients that I need. So like in India, you know, Ayurvedic medicine, there's the six tastes. What is it like? Sweet, sour, pungent, salty, salty. Mm -hmm. um, bitter, bitter. Is that mm -hmm. it? It's only five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're trying to get, all... I think there might be one more, like a weird one. I said pungent, uh, spice. Oh. I think heat. it's heat. It's heat. Oh, the, the spicy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the greens is helping me get like that Ayurvedic, like covering my bases for even more satiety, you know, that's my um, rationale of that. Okay. So if you don't sleep well, you're going to eat sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like, you're guaranteed. Like you, it's like, for me, when I go to AA, they say like, um, you know, if you go to, if you're in a barber shop, you're going to get a haircut, <laughs> you know? So like my house is freaking full of sugar because I have four kids. And like I said, my husband feels rich when he has candy. Okay. So I'm not eating it though. 
I need to be able to sleep well because otherwise in that mid afternoon crash happens and it's like you're in a fog and you're not thinking clearly and you make poor decisions, you know? And when you sleep well, you burn 500 extra calories more than people that don't sleep well. And your metabolism goes up and everything about your body is better. Oh, shoot. Diana, or you go ahead and talk. I have to change him. He's pooped. Oh, did you want to share something, Donna? Or did she tell me to talk? I do. Yeah. I do. You share. Um, my friend and I have been... Um, for a couple of years in a program doing an autoimmune protocol diet, mm -hmm. which is no gluten, no dairy, and no nightshades. Yep. So she had eliminated sugar for like the last year and a half. And um, about six weeks ago, her sister fell ill and was end of life. And so she went to West Virginia and she was able to be with her sister until she passed and then to help her niece, you know, handle um, the house arrangements and all this stuff. So the, for the first four or five weeks, uh, I guess four weeks, um, she cooked um, according to her AIP protocol mm -hmm. and ate, you know, very clean. And she cooked for everybody else that was in the household the same way. Then Easter happened. And um, all of a sudden, you know, she ate the Easter egg candy and the rich foods and everything and within a couple of days her niece said to her aunt what's wrong with you you're acting really weird she had brain fog she couldn't remember things she didn't have any energy and just introducing sugar in that short period of time after not having it for a year and a half like wow. flipped a switch for her um, which was a good life lesson for her niece, who she had been trying to encourage to eat healthy. Um, but, you know, she had done so well and had energy and was able to do all the things she needed, which she wouldn't have been able to do, you know, prior to being on this protocol. And she was just really surprised in such a short period of time what the sugar did to, you know, her her brain capacity or thinking you know, she was just um, jittery and I mean, it just really, really had a, a, a bad effect on her. Wow. Yeah, that's terrible. But you know, what's the nice thing is like now she knows exactly how it affects her, you know, and, and then moving forward, you get to make that choice of, do I really want to go through that again? <laughs> you know, scary. Thank you for sharing that, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Um, okay, so the Serenity Stick works so good. So if you roll that like from your wrist to your elbow or on your neck or the bottom of your feet, um, you're going to get that extra benefit to help keep you asleep. The soft gels, um, they, I mean, they're freaking amazing. So I used to take the old soft gels. They didn't have tart cherry in them. These ones do really up the ante. So um, you know, and I still have to wake up several times a night because of the baby. Um, but I don't feel like I look as crazy as I have in the past when <laughs> with my other kids. So, you know, and I'm older, so I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like it is helping, but I know other people, you know, they're able to sleep through the night because they don't, you know, have a suckling pig. <laughs> um, and then you can use the serenity 15 mil, the oil in your diffuser next to the bed. So using this full system together, they talk about um, all the research they've done. doTERRA is the only company in the world that has put epigenetic research and it's peer reviewed. So like the whole world is seeing doTERRA's science on how they're able to help turn the bad genes on and the good genes back on. Back bad bad genes, genes, off. genes off and good genes on. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, our family history and our, and our medical history, we've got, you know, things that run in the family like cancer and diabetes and, you know, Alzheimer's. So those are the bad genes we want to turn off, you know? So if you have the, the, if you have the ability to do that through finding more rest while working on your short-term goal of changing your diet, I mean, it's just like, like it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> 
they're also finding that people that are using the serenity system, um, it's actually reversing their biological ages um, because they're healing and they're and they're sleeping better and and um, you know actually um, their biological age is reversed. Yeah, in that study, I should have found that study to post on here. They had people they checked their brain, like their gray matter, how much they had in there and everything. And then they had them do the sleep system for six weeks. And then they checked their brain again. It had biologically gone backwards, de-aged seven years. That's amazing, Donna. Thanks for reminding me of that. Um, okay. So I love the electrolytes. They've made such a humongous difference in my energy level, especially, you know, because I'm breastfeeding and, you know, not exactly being able to sleep all the way through the night. But I've been able to not drink. I only drink one cup of coffee and it's not even real coffee. It's mushroom coffee. But I use this kind of more as my energy boost. And it also tastes delicious. So it's kind of like my treat. But I, I'm I'm team strawberry. But I don't know. Which one are you guys favorites of? I like the strawberry, but I like it in more water. Like I put it in my 30 ounce um, water. Um because the concentrated is too sweet for me. And I put the lemon lime in my tea. So because it has stevia in it, um, it sweetens my tea as well mm -hmm. as giving it the lemon lime flavor. Like iced tea? Or hot tea? Yes, uh, iced tea. Oh, okay, that's good. to. And I, I've seen some really good mocktail recipes as well with the electrolytes, but I mean, so let me explain a little bit about the electrolytes. Cause there's a bunch of different companies out there. I used to drink one called, um, wait, what's it called, Donna? Um, what's the one we used to use? Liquid, uh, IV. liquid IV. And some people are using happy juice, happy juice or element. That's the one LMNT. That's usually the ones I see in the gyms or armor. So when they're meant for like beefcake people that like work out like crazy in the gym, it's going to have higher sodium because they're sweating balls and they need more sodium to replace it. So if you're like me, you know, like a normal person who is just like moderately exercising like 30 minutes a day, you don't need that much sodium. So doTERRA's is a lower sodium content. It has eight different types of magnesium. So it's helping to balance your emotions, which when our emotions run high, then we eat sugar. It's helping you sleep better at night. It's also giving you energy. It's just like doing all the bits. And then uh, there's a lot of different kinds of the deep sea minerals too in there. Um, do you remember the what it said, Dina? Uh, the deep sea minerals? I don't know. I, I haven't really looked into this product that much, but I use it every day. In fact, we went to the beach in Florida the other day and we were swimming in the ocean. It was probably like 62 degrees. So it was cold. And I noticed my toes were like curling up. They were cramping really bad. And I was so grateful because I had brought four packs of this. Um, and I'm, I'm team lemon lime. It reminds me of like lemon lime Gatorade. And I craved that like crazy when I was pregnant. <laughs> and so I'm like, and that's probably the last time I had Gatorade <laughs> was when I was pregnant she's 18. Um, and so I got out of the ocean. I had my, I had brought my water bottle. I poured that in there. I drank it and immediately my cramps went away. And I was so grateful because that is very painful. And, um, and so there's a, there's, I know there's like four types of magnesium in here. And that's really what I love is you're getting such, you know, a, a wide array of benefits of those electrolytes um, being the four different types of the magnesium. So part of the reason make sure everybody shakes it before they, um, you know, before they open it. And I suggest open it with scissors and not tear it because it is liquid and it prevents it from being spilled. Yeah, I didn't know it was liquid until I opened it the first time. <laughs> but um, the reason I put it up here for the quitting sugar protocol is because when you eat sugar, it depletes you of magnesium. So if you've had a problem for a while, that means you're really depleted. 
So we want to rebalance our body so that everything is, you know, because when things are out of balance, it, it steals from itself. You know, it's looking to recomplete things. So that's why a lot of times people end up with lower bone density. It's it's because they've been eating a lot of high acid foods or soda, and, and then their body has to recompensate and steal what it needs from places. So we need to replenish our building blocks so our body can be strong and we have longevity moving forward, you know? My son jokes with me. I, I forget what it's called, but there's a hormone that they give cows to make the muscles grow. But if humans take it, you die, but not right away. <laughs> I forget what it's called. He's like, well, I could do that and I would get really fit. And I'm like, yeah, but then you die. Like, so it's not funny really, but it is to him. But there is people that think like that. They're like, I'm going to do these short term things that are like really scary. Like what's that? that there's a medication that people are taking now that's meant for um, diabetes, but it like eats your bones. Ozempric. Oh, what is it? Ozempric. Oh, yeah, I think that's what it is. So I've talked to like three people out of taking it. They're like, but I really want to lose the weight. I'm like, maybe you're not old enough to remember Fenfen. <laughs> like I'm old enough to remember Fenfen and my next door neighbor ended up getting like a million dollar thing because of this lawsuit, you know? And she's had heart problems. And anyway, so we don't want to do short-term fix things that are bad for our health. Okay. Um, so every Monday at 1130 Pacific time, 230 Eastern, uh, we host a, a healthy emotional processing group. So this is where I want to bring, you know, you want support when you're making these dietary changes and there's support in place. <laughs> That's what I love that uh, this has always been here. We've been doing it for over two years. Um, but People just don't have that safe space. And since I've been in recovery, I've just so appreciated that I have people in my life that they're not in my immediate family. So there's things I can talk about that I can't talk about with anybody else, you know, like people that like, I can't go tell my mom things because like, you know, she's a gossip queen. So she's going to tell everybody else. Like mm -hmm. I want to go, which I've been working on. <laughs> so I, I want to go talk to people that aren't really like super close in that know all my friends and family so that I can just get it off my chest and talk about it. It's just a safe space to do that. And, and, and nobody's going to get their feelings hurt. You know, that's what I really appreciate having a safe space like that. And of course we talk about doTERRA products because we all use it for everything that we, that we need. Did anyone have any comment on that? Having emotional support while you make changes is so helpful. Can well, it helps. Just tell me? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Well, I was just going to say it definitely helps. That's community is one of my favorite parts of recovery from anything. Who who is trying to say something? Oh, it was me. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm in the dark because, sorry, the light won't turn on unless a bug flies by the thing. Um, now I don't remember what I was going to say. I think, oh, I was going to ask, what's the name of the whatever you said at 1130 on Mondays? What did you call that? Healthy Emotional Processing. I'll send you the link. Okay. Every single week. That week that's really cute. That's I know. Nice. I love it because it's just, it's really great. And then Wednesdays, 4 o'clock Pacific time, 7 o'clock Eastern. That's our recovery wellness group. So it's geared more toward um, healing from codependency and substance abuse. Step both of those combined or one or the other? Well, it's it's all paths of recovery. Okay. Yeah. But I will share with you, my, my darling friend. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions or comments that you want to share? I tried the stuff you gave me today and it was really yummy, but I didn't know what it was. So I went online and I was trying to learn and then you kind of reset everything. So that was helpful. <laughs> Perfect. 
We love it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a whole 24 hours and I forgot everything that you said, but I know you said, try this and try this. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get the East Coast award for staying awake till eleven o'clock. Love you, Donna. Thank you for coming. You bet. Love you guys too. Well, you guys have a great night, and I'll post the recording. And of course, you're always welcome to the support groups. Thanks, Kim. Thank you, Dina, for showing up. Thanks, Kim. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, Elizabeth.